Well, g'day everyone. Welcome back to the Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. I can't believe we're up to episode number 43 already. Um, something that started off in COVID as kind of something to do has now turned into a really cool series. We get a lot of support, so thank you everyone uh, for that support. And we're looking forward to uh, you know bringing up that milestone 50 episode, which is not far away. But this episode number 43 is brought to you by 1300 for semis. Got the beanie and the stubby holder down here as well. 1300 for semis. 1300 for 73647 is the phone number. Uh, warehousing, deliveries, interstate, you name it, 1300 for semis. Uh, good friends with Noble Logistics, and uh, we're really grateful for their support um, for many, many years. So get on board, 1300 for semis. Ring the phone number, 1300-473647, or jump on website, 1300 for semis, check it in Google, um, social media, Instagram, you, get, you name it, 1300 for semis. So in this particular episode, I wanna keep looking at these VP Commodore restorations, 93, 94 car behind it, because the amount of detail, work, effort that's gone into those rockets um, has been enormous. And I feel like we're kind of on the home stretch now and there's certain little things in those cars that people are gonna pick up on and notice. And I wanna sort of talk about what they are, how we found them and the whole process. Because I, I actually started um, restoring this car, the 93 car and the 94 car a long time ago. It was back in sort of 2016. Um, I haven't been full time on them, don't get me wrong, but uh, before then I hadn't met my wife and two kids. So that just shows you how long restorations can take. But this episode, I want to focus on the 93 car, in particular one element that, uh, for those of you that have uh, followed our Facebook and YouTube channels, you'll notice that we've often referred to this car as being the car with a stack taco, and kind of the 94 car as being the first of the cars with the PI system data logging. Now, through that period, I've probably told a few little white lies because Early on in the in the phase of uh, looking through old photos, which I've got a heap of them here, looking through the old photos, um, a few things came clear to me, um, which I'd like to explain to you how, how that comes through. So I'm gonna show you the photos by turning them up to the screen, but hopefully in my post-edit production, which is very amateur, I'll see if I can sort of upload the photo in, in better quality, you can sort of see what I'm talking about. But um, like I said, this car in particular, um, the 93 car, there was photos of it on the grid, photos that you could sort of see over the driver's shoulder and see the dashboard. Um, and you could see that it had a stack taco in the middle of the dash, which we've spoken about many, many times, a big taco in the center. But as I was looking through photos from the Bathurst race weekend, um, here, this one here is a fantastic example of one of those photos. I'll see if I can zoom it in in post-production. But you'll notice on the passenger side where the mirror should be, to me, is a very obvious PI beacon hanging out the side of that thing. And I thought to myself many, many times, if there's a PI beacon hanging out the side, there's got to be a PI system in there, data logger. But I never had clear photos to prove otherwise. I only ever saw that, that stack taco in the middle of the dash. Then there's many photos um, from the course of that race weekend where I saw the PI beacon hanging out the side. Here's another one from practice. And then another one here. Looks like Greg Hansford going through the dipper. And you can see in the same spot that beacon hanging out. But then I got to the race day photos on the grid and the beacon's gone, it's missing. It looks like it's almost race taped over. So that again left a few more questions and answers, but what really um, jumped out to me was I needed to try and work out whether there was a PI system in this car. So spoke to a lot of the ex-staff team members and um, when we then saw a photo that was in Motorsport News uh, of then journalist uh, Chris Lambden driving the car, something that really stood out to me down on the transmission tunnel just above the gear selector, gear shift cover, a PI system. And this then started to answer a lot of my questions was um, where was the PI dash if it wasn't in the middle of the dash like it is on the 94 car and just about every other race car that would have had a PI system. And again, we started to ask a lot of questions of people who used to work for Perkins Engineering. And um, I remember speaking to, to Curl, as he's known, Dean Curl Orr, 
who was kind of team manager, crew chief on the car in 93. And uh, he said, yep, it had a PI system in it. It rocked up a week or two before the race. And dad, as in Larry said, we'll chuck this thing in. Uh, don't know if it's gonna work, but you know, data loggers were all the rage. Let's, um, let's chuck it into the race. And, and if it's gonna cause us grief, we, we won't run it in the race. And then these fantastic photos we got from Anthony Cook from Mildura, uh, who was at Kawangi, uh, sorry, Maraville. When we took it, you could see uh, when we took the car up to Maraville uh, between Bathurst and the Adelaide Grand Prix race, you can see the PI system on the trans tunnel. So then, and actually on that photo as well, you'll see it changes for the Adelaide Grand Prix. You'll then see the PI beacon so that the lap time works is now on the driver's side, which makes sense for Adelaide because the, the pit wall is on the, on the driver's side and at Bathurst from the passenger side. So we knew now that there was a PI dash in the car at 1993 Bathurst, but did it run in the race? And based on the fact that all the race photos show the, the trackside beacon, and again confirmed speaking to a few of the ex-team members, it came out Saturday night, the PI system, which is uh, crazy to think that um, you know this, this new piece of technology was, was chucked in the car, and then it came out of the car um, for the race. So we decided because um, the car came with the PI system, on the back of the PI system, it still had the 1993 date on it, so it was the original PI. So we've decided that we're gonna put it in the car because it's such a cool uh, part of the story. And uh, once I finish raveling on here, I'll grab the camera and show you a few shots of it inside the car. Um, but yeah, it was basically chucked in the car. The wiring harness um, goes in over the top of the car harness. So you'll see we've sort of laid the wiring out in the car and then now I've sat the PI system in, made the mounting brackets to try and copy what we know it looked like. And then I'll lay the loom out um, over the top of that. So let me grab the, the camera now. I'll show you what we've done there, which is kind of the first time we've, we've disclosed this part of the restoration. But it's, uh, like I said, important part of the, the resto and it's a really cool little part of the story because uh, not many people would know the little details that we uncovered. Big thanks to all the people that have helped us with photos, whether it be uh, Anthony Cook from Mildura, some of my mum's photos in the family albums, various photos from photographers, thanks to Chevron, uh, Chevron Publishing, who and, and Ray Berghouse, who gave us some photos to have a look at. And of course, from, from Motorsport News, uh, Aaron Noonan and the V8 Sleuth crew who sorted us out. But um, none of these photos are obviously uh, for public distribution, but uh, helping us in this resto was a uh, really, really cool part of it. So let's jump in, I'll show you now how that PI system looks in its natural place for the Bathurst weekend of 1993. And there it is. So we um, used a lot of the photos and images we had to recreate that mounting bracket. And uh, you'll see there's our stack taker, which we've documented through Facebook and of course on our YouTube channel. But yeah, this was a really cool part of this resto. So we're gonna leave it in there. Um, although it wasn't in there for the race, it was definitely there for the shootout. And um, like I said, we had the dash. So we think it's a really important part of the uh, restoration. And I think it's really neat that it was mounted down there. So we're busy chucking in um, the wiring harness, which never got any heat shrink. It's just the original PI system, colored curly up wires. And uh, we start running the sensors out, you'll see we had to make the beacon over there. Um, so that was a pretty pretty important part of what we were up to. And uh, then we run the sensors out through the car and uh, the download cord uh, port and all those sorts of things. So um, we don't have to make the driver's side one for the beacon for the Adelaide Grand Prix because uh, it wasn't there for Bathurst. Um, that was only a problem when they had to go to another racetrack. So that won't be in the car, only on that side. Uh, so looking forward to, to powering that up when we power up the car. Um, another cool part of just how accurate this 1993 restoration really is. All right, so that's it. That's the PI system in the 1993 car. Uh, really cool. Um, and looking forward to sharing more and more stories about these cars. The next one uh, will be quite funny as well um, in terms of the length we went to, uh, which we probably didn't have to, but I'll get into that in the next episode. Um, but thank you again to 1300 for semis for jumping on board. Uh, our YouTube channel, great supporters of ours, and uh, looking forward to bringing you more and more content. Don't forget our website, guys, uh, perkinsengineering.com.au. 
trying to get rid of that last little bit of stock there. There's some pretty cheap t-shirts there on the, on the website, um, 20, 30 bucks, uh, stuff like that. So please jump on there and then we'll get a few more things popping up later in the year. Thanks again for the support. Look forward to bringing another episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. And looking forward to the road to 50 episodes. Cheers.